Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna go over a few tips that I think you guys might find helpful if you're looking to purchase a house. Buying a house is normally a great investment. Not only does it give you a place to live, but it also gives you the opportunity to sell that house at a higher value than what you purchased it at. However, if you rush into buying a house before you're actually ready to do so, it can be a big mistake. So in this video, I'm gonna help give you guys a few guidelines to evaluate whether or not you're actually prepared to make that big purchase yet. So buying a house is going to be a fun and exciting time. However, it's also going to be one of the biggest investments you ever make in your life. So you should not be rushing into it. Whenever you're going to purchase a house, there's a few things that you're gonna to wanna to make sure to look into to say, hey, am I actually prepared to make this purchase? The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is smash the like button on this video. So the first thing you're actually gonna to wanna to do whenever you're purchasing a house is save up for an emergency fund and then save up for your down payment on your house. Your emergency fund should be at least three months worth of living expenses. So let's say you spend $3,000 a month, you would want at least $9,000 in that emergency fund. So once you've set up that $9,000 in your emergency fund, you can then start saving for your down payment for your house. Your down payment should be anywhere from 15 to 20%, if not more, and preferably it would be best to put at least 20% down on a house. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking, Logan, that's a, that's a lot of money in it. I know it is, but whenever you put 20% down on a house, you can avoid what's known as private mortgage insurance or PMI. So private mortgage insurance basically just allows people that aren't able to put down 20% on a house to still get a loan for the full amount of the house's cost. And it also ensures for the banks to say, hey, if this person defaults on their mortgage payment, I'm still getting paid basically. So it's kind of a win-win for both of you, but you're not going to have to pay on anything extra wherever you're purchasing a house and that private mortgage insurance is gonna cost you every month. So you're, you might be thinking, well, how much is private mortgage insurance really gonna cost me? And it varies. So depending on your credit score, the better your credit score is, the lower your PMI per month is gonna be. But typically you can expect anywhere from 30 to $70 every month for every $100,000 you have out for a loan. So let me explain that a little bit. So let's say you take out a $200,000 loan, you could expect to see anywhere from 60 to $140 every month that you'll have to pay in private mortgage insurance. And you'll have to continue to pay on that until you have what's known as the loan to value ratio under 80%. The loan to value ratio is just the loan amount divided by the total value of the house at the time of the purchase. So for an example, let's say you go and buy a $100,000 house. You have $15,000 saved up for your down payment, so you're gonna need an $85,000 loan from the bank to make this purchase. So your loan to value ratio at time of purchase of that house is gonna be 85,000 divided by 100,000, which gives you 85%. So as you pay on your mortgage, that 85% is gonna to continue to drop because you're paying off that loan. And as soon as you get to 80% or below, you normally will not have to pay for private mortgage insurance anymore at that point. Once you've saved up for your emergency fund, as well as the down payment on your house, preferably 20%, you're now ready to go to the bank to get the loan. So something to keep in mind whenever you're going to the bank to get your loan is that you want to make sure that the banks are offering you the best interest rate possible on your mortgage. So in order to get a loan from the banks, they'll typically require two years worth of proof of income, as well as they'll be looking at your credit score. So basically, the better your proof of income is and the better your credit score is, the better interest rates you are going to receive from banks are. If you're interested in improving your credit score, I actually have a video where I go through how you can improve your credit score by using credit cards, and I'll make sure to link that in the description if you're interested in that. So you might be thinking, well, how much can a better credit score improve my interest rate? And it can improve it quite a bit, to be honest with you. It'll improve it anywhere from 0.5% to 1%, which you might be thinking that's not really that much. But over a 30-year mortgage, that's thousands and thousands of dollars that you're going to be paying in interest that you wouldn't have to if you just would have had a better credit score whenever you went to get that mortgage originally. So it's very important to make sure that the interest rate you are receiving from the banks is the best possible that you can get. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that the monthly mortgage payments aren't going to be too much for you. 
So a very conservative rule of thumb that was made popular by Dave Ramsey is the one quarter or 25% rule, which says basically your mortgage payment should not be more than 25% of your take home pay every month. So let's say you make $4,000 every month, your mortgage payment shouldn't exceed $1,000. And I know many of you will probably think that's really conservative and it is conservative, but it also puts you in a good position to save money. And if something were to go wrong at your house, like a heat pump goes out or some, your plumbing has to be replaced, you'll still have some money set aside that you can make those fixes. So I, I like to use that rule of thumb just because it puts you in a good position of not getting into a bad position basically. <laughs> If you're interested in trying to figure out what your monthly mortgage payment is actually going to be, Dave Ramsey does have a calculator on his website that you just plug in the interest rate as well as the total amount on the loan and it will output a monthly payment schedule for you based on if it's a 15 year mortgage or a 30 year mortgage. And I'll make sure to link that calculator in the description below if you want to go use it. If you guys made it this far in the video and you can say yes to the four criteria I've mentioned to this point, then I can say with a pretty high level of confidence that you're in a great position to buy a house. Just to reiterate what those four criteria are, the first is you want to make sure to save up for that emergency fund at least three months worth of your living expenses. The second is saving up for your down payment on your house, preferably 20% to avoid your PMI cost every month. The third item is you've gone to your banks and they are offering you a great interest rate on your mortgage. And the fourth is that you've looked at the mortgage that you're gonna be getting and the monthly payments aren't too much. If you've looked at those four things and you can't say yes to each of them, then it might not be the best time to purchase a house. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, Logan, if I'm not buying a house, that means I'm renting. And if I'm renting, I'm just throwing away money. However, that's just not the case. Renting can actually be more affordable than purchasing a house sometimes, and it can actually cost you less in the long run. And I know many of you might be thinking, well, how does that actually work out? And there's a video done by Graham Stephan that does a great job breaking down the cash flows that you could expect to see whenever you're living in an apartment and whenever you're living in a house. A lot of them have to do with how long you're living in each one and what the market actually does while you're living in the house. But I'm gonna make sure to link that in the description so you guys can go check out how those cash flows actually compare so you can make the best choice for yourself. That's really all I have on buying houses, guys. If you guys found the video helpful, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have a different opinion, because I know that I have a very conservative view when it comes to purchasing houses, let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn from you guys as well. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.